Brandon says this. He says, in this first day, he's talking about Sukkot, by the way. And this is actually going to play into um, a little bit into our Sabbath discussion. But uh, he says, in the first day, actually the day before you start counting the seven days of the feast. So he's, once again, Sukkot, in which you take the boughs of the, tr- the boughs of the tree, as you said, it was traditional to do it before. Yeah, so uh, traditionally the sukkah is made in between the time of Yom Kippur and the time of Sukkot. And there's actually a good reason, I mean, we, I think Rob and I could probably talk for uh, several shows about the significance of the uh, festivals, and maybe we'll do a little bit of that here. But um, yeah, so the festival of Yom Kippur happens, and then we come into this festival of Sukkot. So he goes on. Leviticus 23, 40 says, And ye shall take you on the first day the boughs of goodly trees, branches of palm trees, and the boughs of thick trees, and willows of the brook, and ye shall rejoice before the Lord your God seven days. This is actually a debate among people, at least in my congregation. Uh, it has been a debate among people in our congregation. Uh, what does it mean? Because uh, within Judaism, they're going to bring in what's called the lulav and the etrog, and uh, they're going to bring them in and they're going to wave them uh, in different directions to fulfill this commandment in Leviticus 23, uh, 40. And they're going to do that because ultimately what this command is saying is bring uh, the standard branches and and uh, uh, produce kind of things from the land that you're in. In other words, from Israel and bring them into the su- sukkah to show that you uh, that you are now in the land. In other words, you're not wandering in the desert anymore. So the, the debate in our congregation has been, should it be these specific boughs that are talked of in this passage? Or should we bring in, since we're in the Pacific Northwest, should we bring in pine cones and, and mm. uh, you know, uh, evergreen boughs and stuff like that? And so it's kind of a fun little de- debate that we that we have. Uh, he goes on. Also, in script, uh, also, scripture says the festival is seven days, and this is actually what I really want to get to here. Uh, Leviticus twenty three thirty nine says also in the fifteenth day of the seventh month, when ye have, uh, he's using the uh, King James. I'm so not used to this, so I'm sorry if I stumble over it. When ye have gathered in the fruit of the land, ye shall keep a feast unto the Lord seven days. On the first day shall be a Sabbath, and on the eighth day shall be a Sabbath. End quote from the Bible, back to Brandon. But then it speaks of the eighth day being a Sabbath. Is this Sabbath not a part of the seven days? This is excellent. This is such a good question. And it's really, I think, actually one of the most important questions that a person can ask about Sukkot. Why? Okay, we have, uh, there are two times within the Torah that we see the eighth day being really important. It is the day of circumcision. We are to uh, circumcise male uh, males on the eighth day, and then the eighth day of Sukkot, which is not actually the eighth day of Sukkot. So we need to talk a little bit, and interrupt me at any point, Rob, we need to talk a little bit about the eighth day and the seven days. Sukkot is actually only seven days long. And what we're supposed to do is we're supposed to dwell in or sit in these booths. And it's supposed to remind us of the wandering in in the, the, the desert, right? Well, why were we wandering in the desert for 40 years? Israel was wandering in the desert for 40 years because they rejected the covenant. And then after the 40 years, what happens? They come into the land because the next generation actually accepts the covenant and they get baptized into the Jordan and they come into the land. And so the eighth day is actually a sign of eternity. That is that this earth is represented in the seven days. So we are in a booth that is temporary and will quickly be taken down. And on the eighth day, we come into this celebration, which is representative of of eternity with Christ. Interestingly, what is the uh, sign of circumcision? I have argued, uh, and I'm pretty confident myself, that uh, circumcision is a sign of the virgin birth. And so we come to eat the Passover lamb, which is a representation of Christ. We have to be circumcised, which is a representation of the virgin birth which is done on the eighth day, which also represents eternity. So when we come into the covenant through Christ, when we uh, are saved through the blood of the Messiah, which is all represented on Passover, uh, then we come through the Day of Atonement, and we come to this 
seven-day festival. And on the eighth day, because we have been entered into this covenant through the Messiah who came through a virgin birth, we are then able to come into the eighth day representing eternity. And all of these blocks fit together. It's, I mean, all of the festival blocks are just, they fit real nicely into their perfect, into this perfect picture of Christ and and the believers coming to Christ and uh, being baptized uh, and then having that atonement made and then coming into eternity. Thank you so much for watching this video. Tell us your thoughts on this subject by leaving a comment in the comment section. Make sure you like, share, subscribe, and enable those notifications. And we'll see you in the next video.